a strong intellectual protection is needed when we talk about intellectual property, especially if it is difficult to imitate technology is involved. Green sourcing has been a big positive impact for the past few years. When we talk about green sourcing, we talk about environmentally responsibility, responsible with our environment. Many firms are looking to their supply chains to deliver green results. I mean, you go to McDonald's, nowadays you don't get styrofoam boxes, you get paper so that the product like hamburgers are going to be wrapped up in the paper and given to you instead of a styrofoam box. Or you have cardboard boxes which are recyclable that are used by McDonald's. And these are some of the things that McDonald's does for producing greener results or environmentally responsible results. So financial results can be improved through working with suppliers on green sourcing. And usually companies put together a comprehensive green sourcing effort or plan. They assess how to use these items that are purchased and they make sure that everything that they purchase is pretty much sourced as green. Green sourcing also involves wastage, reducing wastage. So companies also spending time to reduce waste as we looked at in the last chapter in just in time on lean. There are six step processes, process for green sourcing. You assess the opportunity, evaluate and prioritize cost. You engage agencies to get the sources. So basically here you encourage cross-functional ownership of the process between the customer and the suppliers. You assess the supplier base. You engage vendors who are green or who would like, like to work with you on these green in the process. You develop the sourcing strategy based on quantity, quantity and um, when you want to trigger your reordering point, so on and so forth. You develop the sourcing strategy, the policies that you came up with in chapter 12 or 11 rather. You implement sourcing strategies, selecting vendors and products based on certain criteria and then you institutionalize the strategy. So here you implement metrics and see how you can monitor and audit your performance. Whether you do outsourcing or whether you do non-outsourcing, there is a total cost, cost of ownership. The total cost of ownership is an estimate of the costs that includes all costs related to procurement and use of an item, including costs of disposing the items. So let's take a look at this figure. So you have acquisition costs. These are the purchase planning costs, quality costs, taxes that you pay, purchase prices that you pay, financing costs and all that stuff. That is part of the acquisition costs. Acquisition costs lead to ownership costs because you acquired it right now, now you own it. Now you have energy costs, you have maintenance and repair costs, you have finance costs, you have supply chain costs or net, supply chain network costs. That also is part of the total cost of ownership. Since you own it, you have to dispose it sometimes after it is used. So you have disposal costs, you have environmental costs, you have warranty costs, your product liability costs, and if there is if there is dissatisfaction among your customers, you have those costs as well. These costs are also part of the total cost of ownership. So when you when you look at the total cost of ownership, you're going to look at look at 
the cost of acquiring the product, the cost of the ownership of the product, and the cost of post ownership of the product as well. There are a couple of measurement that we have to look at in sourcing. One is what we have done already, which is the inventory turnover. Inventory turnover, we did it in chapter one. Cost of goods sold over average inventory value is inventory turnover. Then the weeks of supply is the average inventory value over cost of goods sold times 52. That is another measurement that you can do. So let's take a quick example of that. I have total revenue of $229 million. And a cost of revenue is $141 million. The inventory costs about $5 million. And this is what Apple reported in the information in the recent annual report. So now I can calculate the inventory turnover or Apple and the weeks of supply of Apple. Inventory turnover is cost of goods sold over average inventory value, which is 141 million over 4, 5, 5 million, which is about 29 turns per year, which is pretty good. Weeks of supply is average inventory value over cost of goods sold times 52 weeks. And these are weeks. So that comes to 1.79 weeks or 1.8 weeks. That's also pretty good. So this is a sourcing performance measure for Apple computers. So that concludes our video sessions. Please see all the videos that I have loaded, including the YouTube videos and all that, and get ready for the exam. It was good talking to you guys. It was off awesome. Hopefully we will meet in person one of these days. When you come to the college, please come and see me. Um, we can have a chat and would love to see you. Okay, good luck.